Okay, now I'm gonna break this solo down for you into 10 separate licks. Uh, we're playing this slow blues solo in the key of A. And uh, lick one sounds like this. So that is lick number one, and we're starting right on the uh, the one chord, the A chord, coming in on this fifth fret here, on the, uh, this is now the E and the G sharp strings, and this is right in that first position. You know, you have your A major chord in open E tuning here, right on the fifth fret, that large major chord. So just sliding in, those two notes gives us the root in the uh, major third here. Now you can pick that with your thumb and your first finger, or you can do it with your first and second finger. I vary it, I mean, just depends on how I'm feeling. I, I kind of do it second nature, so I may just do it differently every single time. Uh, so experiment with using your thumb and first finger, or first and second finger. So this is the start of the slow blues, and the dynamics are pretty low. So I got my volume on my neck pickup, which I'm using for the first section, around seven or so. And then I'm just gently sliding in. Don't have much pressure with my left hand. I'm not like tensing my wrist and my arm. I'm trying to make it sound very relaxed. So just sliding in applying some light vibrato. You shouldn't be pressing the strings down real hard, and you shouldn't be vibratoing like. It's a very slow, relaxed vibrato. Now, the four chord is gonna happen. This is a quick change blues, and so you're gonna let this thing ring out for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now the D chord happens. One, two, three, four. On the fifth count, we're gonna slide into the 10th fret, which is our root note. It's our A note of the B string. You can add a rake there if you like, uh, or not. I like adding a rake uh, to that note, gives it a lot of expression. Then vibrato it slightly. And then on the 10, 11, 12th count, you do this kind of Dwayne Allman thing that we talked about previously in the course, uh, the exercise that you wanna be able to master when playing open E tuning slide guitar. So the 10, 11, 12, you got 10, 11, and then this is fifth fret to the third fret on the B string. That's 10, 11th count, and then 12th count is sliding into the fifth fret, our major third here. Our home position, big major uh, chord here, uh, A. And then when the A chord comes back in, we're just gonna strike fifth fret on the uh, E string here. Vibrato that. We're gonna let that ring out. And then on the uh, like 12 and basically, do that little move here. It's kind of a crazy thing to do. Uh, sounds really cool. A quick, quick um, rake here. And then I'm sliding into the fourth fret to give me that minor third and just gradually kind of move back a little bit. Now the bar rolls over again to the next bar and then on the sixth and seventh count you go only striking once. So not many notes in this lick but there's an extreme amount of nuances going on. The vibrato, the raking, getting the counting right, uh, the raking on this little part, sliding back, striking it once, and then sliding back to it, but not striking to it. All these little nuances you have to master, and you need to get the timing perfectly. That's why I'm telling you about the counts. So, uh, you know, you'll have this sound. And so just be sure to uh, get your muting with all this as well. You, you've got to take all the uh, 
the slide techniques, muting uh, practices that are, are taught you in that course and applying to this stuff, which I've been talking about in the course already. Uh, slide method one, opening tuning, you know, the hop technique and muting everything around it to get a clean sound. Okay, so that's it for lick one. All right, lick two sounds like this. Okay, so that is lick number two, and what's happening here is we're going to the uh, four chord, and so right before that happens on the 11th count, I'm sliding two. Previously, we're on this. On the 11th count, go 11, 12, one. You wanna strike that 10th fret here on the G sharp string right when the D chord happens. So this time, we wanna let that ring out, shouldn't be muting everything around. If you'll take notice that this 10th fret here all the way across is our D major chord. Uh, this is, you know, an uh, example of how to play to the chord in a very simplified manner. We're just going to that 10th fret, letting it ring. You're not going to mute all that stuff. And, if, you know, if other strings are ringing out around it, that's the beauty of open E tuning. It doesn't really matter because this whole thing is a D chord and the chord progression is on the D chord. We're just striking these two. But I'm not applying any muting because I want it to ring out. Add some light vibrato. On the 11th tw uh, and 12th count, we're gonna do this Dwayne Allman kind of, well, I like to call it the fallback technique. Uh, I'll talk about more of um, uh, this technique in a play like Dwayne Allman slide. Uh, the course here. So we're gonna uh, just stay on the 10th fret and just do that kind of slide back technique on the B string, G sharp string, 10th fret. And then on the, when the four chord on the next bar on the first count, strike that 10th fret, add vibrato. Uh, it's a cool little position right here. So in the key of A, you know we have our big area here major chord. When it goes to the four chord, we have our big D chord here. But also take notice that our root note A, the key that we're in, is located a note in that large D chord. Simple concept, but uh, sometimes people don't pick up on that real quickly. So lo located in this D chord, you have that little 10 and 10, which is your major six in your root. So that's where that is coming from. Uh, you can start piecing together these little positions and patterns. Just to, it sounds more like you're playing to the chord when you start doing this stuff. So anyway, we had that slide back lick. And then now we're just going to slide back uh, 10. And then fifth, five, fifth fret on the high E string. Now slide back. This is when the A chord is coming back in. So you have this. And this has got that same fallback type of sound. I think it sounds really cool. You're here, Dwayne Allman doing this stuff. Also muting this section now, muting everything, striking to my first finger, 10. Now I'm gonna mute this, uh, well, I'm gonna play the B string on the fifth fret, but mute the, you know, the G sharp string and the high E string so I can get separation from the notes. Vibrato, that fifth fret. Right when the A chord comes in, we're landing on that ma major third here. 
And then on the 10, 11, 12 count, we're just sliding into the fifth fret of the G sharp string. And then hitting fifth fret right here. All taken from this big thing. So basically the first little section here, a couple licks, we've just been using this for our A, this for our D. It sounds like we're playing to the chord. Okay, so that's it for lick two. Okay, lick three sounds like this. Okay, for lick three, uh, we're still on the A chord. We're about to come to the D chord. So we're doing this little pattern here. Um, I love playing this on slide guitar. Classic blues little area. And in open E tuning, it's great because it's, you know the strings are right on top of each other. You get this flat seven interval and fifth interval to give you this. Just a classic blues lick. And that's just a must know pattern. So we're taking our big fifth fret thing, a major chord. You move up three frets on your G sharp and B strings and you get that two note little pattern. You hear that in tons of Dwayne Allman, Derek Truck stuff. In this case, I'm just playing uh, the notes here and I'm resting on the first count. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sliding back to the A major position to the third fret, another must know blues lick. Slide up into the fifth fret of the G sharp string. Hit the fifth fret, which is our root or A. And then we're gonna slide back on the 10, 11, 12 count. Five, three on the G sharp string. Backwards to the third fret of the D, uh, E string here. And then when the fifth chord, fifth, uh, yeah, the five chord happens, uh, the fifth interval, which is E, fifth fret right here. So in this little pattern, you always wanna know where your one, four, and five notes are at. Uh, there is no four uh, note in this big chord, as there is no D in the A major chord, but there is an E, and there's you know, two right here. So when the uh, chord progression, 12 bar blues goes to E, you know you can end on this note, and in this case, in this lick, I'm in on the, this note. Always gotta know where your one, four, or five are all over the fretboard. So really cool lick, lick three. This one's gonna take a little bit more muting practice. Um, I'm just sliding in. You can, you can use your first and second fingers. Got my thumb muting the uh, E string here. Now I'm gonna slide backwards to the third fret and so I gotta mute that G sharp string. Hop up. And now mute the uh, E and the B. Strike the G sharp string with first finger, finger, and then strike fifth. Hop up. Strike that fifth fret, and then uh, use all these mute, muting and hop techniques. Uh, there are t t I've taught in a slide techniques. Uh, that's just a big thing. That's a great exercise to do as well every day if you can't get it. So that's in the key of A. And if you're in the key of A, like I said, major chord you gotta find, move up three frets and do that pattern lick. Uh, if you wanted to play it in the key of like maybe B, this is seventh fret. Move up three frets on the G sharp and B. You need to also be able to play all these licks in various keys so you're just not stuck and playing this all in the key of A. Um, you can go to the key of E here on the 12th fret. Whatever your major chord is, you know, this is it. Then move up three frets and do that pattern. B, 
everybody. I did some improvising there. You can add some rakes to it. We'll go back to the key of A, fifth fret. See, I changed it up just slightly, added the mute, the rake, right? You can rake backwards with that, like I taught, and I believe I taught that in Play Like the Almond Slide. Anyway, you can add rakes and little mutes and little things, nuances all over the place. The key is to get it down like I do it, and then experimenting adding these little uh, extras to different parts of these sections. Okay, so that is it for like three.